Well, this alligator here isn't very large, it's more of a medium sized one. The way it's swimming through the water, and the clarity of the water is giving a very good view of the whole alligator's body and all those osteoderms covering the skin. The way alligators can sink down into the water to look to be more stealthy is also an interesting behavior. These two birds walking towards us right here is actually a pair of sandhill cranes, which is one of Florida's tallest bird species. While they may look like herons, they're actually closer related to rails like the common gallinule, purple gallinule, and American coot. Their habitat preference is also more versatile than herons, as they don't always need to be near a water supply to survive and eat food. The bare red cap is an easy identification factor for this species. Overall, sandhill cranes like these ones are actually known for being incredibly tame towards humans and just like these, they're walking right next to us without a problem. While the sandhill crane is overall a migratory species, the ones here in Florida are actually stationary here. The short-winged green grasshopper, while easily identified by its distinctive shape, comes in many different color varieties, including having no green on them at all, just like this individual. I've seen them all brown, sometimes a light tan color, sometimes a good mix of green and brown, and sometimes even all green. But all of them have very short wings and a slanted face, as well as a dark line running behind the eye. The Pearl Crescent is one of South Florida's most intricately colored and patterned butterfly species. A member of the checker spot subfamily, these are very small but brightly patterned and colored butterflies. Crescents, like this one, overall have an orange color with black spotting and mottling, but the different species can be pretty hard to tell apart. In Florida, we get this one, the Pearl Crescent, and also the Phaon Crescent. But Pearl Crescent averages on the brighter orange side, whereas Phaon Crescent averages more on the paler side. This caterpillar right here with the black and white stripes and the red head is a Spanish moth caterpillar. I saw this species for the first time two weeks ago, and ever since then I've been seeing a whole bunch of these guys, so there might be an influx of Spanish moths this season. It's been a while since I've seen an adult Spanish moth, so we'll have to wait for once the larval season is all over. This fish right here is one of Florida's most ancient species of fish still around, the Florida gar. Gars are one of the few fish left in the world with ganoid scales, a very strong plate-like covering on the skin as well as not having a fully developed backbone. This undeveloped piece of tissue in the back is called a notochord, and is actually a remnant of early vertebrate ancestors. Gars also have a long mouth, with powerful jaws, and long, thin teeth. This is an ichneumon wasp right here, an odd-looking parasitic wasp with a very long abdomen and ovipositor. No matter how hard I search on bug guide or iNaturalist though, I can't narrow this down to an exact species. While I've seen plenty of marsh rabbits before, this is an opportunity I've never had before with this species. Two marsh rabbits eating right out in the open. This one individual right here looked quite funny with a red flower on its head. But not only is it a rare opportunity to just have one of these guys out in the open for more than a few seconds, Having two of these guys out in the open eating at the same time is an even better opportunity. You may be wondering why this very small butterfly right here is called a Saronis blue, because despite having pale brown underwings, the upper wings are bright blue in color and the butterfly appears blue in flight as well. The sepia basket tail is not a very common species in South Florida, heavily outnumbered by the Florida basket tail, yet there are two of them perched on this tree right here. The sepia basket tail is named for the presence of more orange on the abdomen than the normal basket tail species, but in South Florida, a better way to identify them, especially in bad lighting, is by the thickness of the abdomen which sepia basket tail has a much thicker abdomen than Florida basket tail. While this isn't a very common species in Florida, this is only my second time seeing one, the brown winter grasshopper has a very distinctive pattern and there's not very many other species that look like it. With the overall brown body, pale stripe on the top 
running down the back, the yellow abdomen, and very large black eyes. It's a very distinctive species. This was an exciting catch for me though, as it is my first time ever holding one. This right here is definitely the highlight of the week though. Well, I can't say where this is, because this is a protected species. This is a adult female great horned owl in her nest with two very young great horned owls, one of which is still next to her in the nest. This individual is slightly paler and fluffier, so it's probably younger. Whereas the second one is already fledged and has some of that brown patterning on it. You can see here it's fluffing out its wings. It's probably going to take its first flight sometime soon as well.